Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the 56th meeting of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group. Uh, this is the first meeting of 2017 and the first meeting of our sixth year in existence. Uh, I uh, wanted to uh, just share with everybody, based on the conversations that we uh, had in the group uh, in the fall last year, uh, that there are some uh, exciting developments with the evolution of the group uh, underway. Uh, I don't have anything that I can share easily at the moment, um, other than to say that we had uh, a very positive meeting uh, with the new Dean of uh, Design, the Faculty of Design here at OCAD on Friday, and uh, she's very interested in accelerating the evolution of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group uh, towards the idea of, a, of an institute, a uh, global institute, uh, that we uh, discussed in the group uh, late last year. Um, I won't say any more than that at this point. Uh, it, Folks want more details, feel free to email myself or Peter Jones, uh, who's on the uh, session today, and uh, we'd be happy to share uh, more information about uh, what's happening. Um, I'm hoping we will be able to get to the point we discussed last year of, of getting some MOUs uh, underway between OCAD and other institutions to uh, start to uh, do this at a global level, but uh, we're, just, we're a little way away from that at this point. Okay, so we also have Stephen Davies who's just joined us, um, and I will add Stephen to the uh, uh, agenda uh, to the uh, list of uh, attendees. So that brings us to the next point. So our agenda is in the uh, chat. Um, if you click on the link at the top of the uh, chat session today, you will get to the wiki page of the agenda, and I have added an attendance list uh, to that. Uh, and uh, anybody who likes any corrections to that, please put that into the chat, and I'll deal with that. Okay, uh, so with that, I'm going to turn over the meeting to our presenters today who are going to introduce themselves. Uh, Maya, uh, please uh, take it away. Um, hey, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Maya Hoveskog, and I'm an assistant uh, professor at Halmstad University in Sweden. Uh, and my main research area is. Uh, uh, innovation management with focus to processes uh, and um, recently we have been uh, looking into business model innovation in, in different uh, contexts. Um, for this uh, presentation we will show part of our work um, on the background of our research and how we um, actually integrate this uh, research in, in our education. Um, together with me tonight are two uh, colleagues that we work on, uh, Marie and Niklas, and I will leave the uh, floor to them to introduce themselves. Marie? Okay, Marie Matson. I'm uh, working as an associate professor at Hansa University in environmental science, and I I focus mainly on climate change issues, issues of uh, biogas, uh, trying to, to uh, encourage more biogas production in rural areas. Yes. Yeah, Niklas. Hello everybody, my name is Niklas Karlsson. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Halmstad University. Uh, I'm focusing on business model innovation uh, in the context of foreign-based biogas production. Uh, and I have a background also in uh, environmental science. Uh, I have a master's degree in, in environmental science, and that's also partly why I focus on the biogas context. Uh, you'll hear more about that in a short while. Mm -hmm. Um, so we will present together, and since I have the presentation, when it's time for Nicolas or Marie to present, I'll just give them the word, and when you're ready for the next slide, tell me to, to change, okay? Um, do you have any questions so far? I don't see anyone, so I will try to ask frequent if you have questions, so I don't go on forever. Okay, so... Um, how we have been thinking today to give you some background. The team you have heard already for, uh, from part of us and then the key ingredients that 
kind of explain the direction we have taken. Um, Marie will make a short overview on a, on a research uh, area called Green Innovation, um, established at Hamster University. Um, and Niklas will give you a, a short overview of the biogas production uh, in Sweden um, and the challenges uh, it faces um, at the moment. Um, and um, then uh, we will give a brief overview. I will give a brief overview of uh, our first practical example and try for, uh, in line with education for flourishing, uh, which in essence presents um, uh, results that uh, we have written an article uh, together with Anthony. Um, which is currently on the second review in the uh, Journal of Cleaner Production. So we hope for a positive answer eventually. Um, and if there is uh, some time um, and interest, of course, um, uh, Nicholas will uh, present other related work and some work in progress that is also uh, connected to um, the use and application of the flourishing business canvas both when it comes to the research project that Niklas uh, has um, as well as uh, the education that we carry on. Okay, so background. Um, you heard the presentation. There is one colleague that unfortunately couldn't be here today, uh, Fauzi Halila, uh, who is also an associate professor uh, in innovation management. Um, and basically, me and Fauzi are part of the Center for Innovation, Entrepreneurship and Learning that is focusing on innovation processes and business model innovation in general. And we have been working in the context of wind power industry, um, and we are currently working in the context of uh, health care um, and also in um, uh, agricultural uh, uh, agricultural industry. Well, Marie and Niklas um, are part of the uh, Center for Applied Sciences um, at Helmstead University. So we are um, carrying out an indisciplinary uh, collaboration in, 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 this, uh, ah, in this project. Um, some key ingredients which kind of uh, explain the direction we have taken. Uh, when it comes to the Center for uh, Innovation, Entrepreneurship and Learning, um, historically um, the focus has been on uh, driving action-based collaborative research with industry. Um, and this is explained by much of funds. I think we have got uh, by the Swedish state that requires the industry to uh, co-fund 50% and the issues that, are hand, uh, that, are, uh, that we are working on are relevant for the participating uh, partners. Um, as part of this uh, work, uh, there has been um, experience in learning network approach where uh, different uh, stakeholders that uh, are not necessarily part of the same value chain are um, collaborating um, um, towards one common goal. Uh, and one example of uh, that research and this approach uh, is um, the work that is done by uh, Fauzi. Uh, when companies had to um, uh, implement uh, the standards ISO for uh, 10,000. So different companies were collaborating to solve different problems and issues under their implementation process. Um, some, some years we have also um, integrated uh, this integrated students in this work, and we have uh, collaboratively planned and organized uh, experiential workshops. Um, and um, at the beginning, uh, when it comes to business model innovation, we used uh, the business model campus from Ostewalder. Uh, but since we have been 
members of the Strong Sustainable Business Group and became aware of the uh, Flourishing Business Canvas work. And um, we have been uh, using the Flourishing Business Canvas. Um, but we are, of course, quite early in this, in, in this work. Um, and uh, we have carried on workshops uh, on different levels, bachelor, master. Um, and when we write doctoral level, we mean that um, um, Nicholas is using the flourishing business canvas in, in running workshops uh, with companies and also with the students related to his case company um, as part of his doctoral work and research. Um, and um, the research uh, area, Green Innovation, uh, has been established as a platform to initiate and establish interdisciplinary collaboration uh, between innovation sciences and environmental sciences at the university, uh, which has not been uh, existing uh, so much uh, previously. Um, is there any questions or if Marie and Niklas would like to add something? No? So I give the... No word to Marie to um, talk a little bit about green innovation and uh, what is the idea with this research area. Yes, thank you. I just like to welcome uh, Professor Sean Gobi uh, to the meeting. Uh, Professor Gobi is in the faculty. Um, if I get this right, uh, Sean, please correct me. Uh, in fact, I'm going to uh, let you tell the green is the name of the faculty at the University of Waterloo, just uh, west of us here in uh, Ontario. Uh, and he's also a first explorer of the Canada team using the uh, classes there. So, uh, welcome, Sean. I think this is the first meeting you've uh, attended live. That's fantastic. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. Um, can you just remind me which faculty you're in? It, so, I'm in the faculty of the environment in the School of Environment, Enterprise, and Development. Uh, the University of Waterloo doesn't have a standalone business school, so those uh, we actually have basically a business department in each of our six faculties, and I teach the social entrepreneurship class in our environment faculty. Okay. Teaching at this term, yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Sean, I appreciate that. Okay, Maria, please carry on. Okay, so green innovation. Uh, Maya, you can switch. Maya, yeah, can you on the, change? On the, on this one? That. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe that. It's here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so um, this area, green innovation, uh, started about three years ago. Uh, we got the opportunity to apply for some money at the, at the university. And uh, we had for some time been interested in, in this, uh, trying to develop this interdisciplinary research uh, area. And, and so when we got the opportunity, we applied and we got some uh, funding to, to get started. And now we have been running this area for about three years. And um, the research, the, the idea is that we should develop this interdisciplinary research in, and, and use it for focusing on, on the, the social, the, the, the big challenges, uh, societal challenges of today. And of course, by the societal challenges, we mean global warming, um, rural development issues, uh, issues of, of uh, renewable energy, uh, and that sort of thing. And so the research should be carried out in collaboration between different academic disciplines and organizations. And, and we are proof of that since Maya come from the innovation uh, side and Niklas and I come from the environmental side. And uh, the research aims to create uh, competitiveness in, in green industries. Uh, we also want to strengthen innovation and stimulate new products, uh, services, and processes in the green industries. Now you can take the next one. 
Yes. So we started off by um, starting two uh, PhD projects. One of them is uh, Niklas's project, which is uh, about business model innovation in farm scale biogas production. And biogas, Niklas could tell you a little bit more about why we are interested in biogas and why we think this is important to work with and, and a very interesting field where this uh, tools uh, for business model innovation are very, very good to, to work with. We also have another project, another PhD project uh, dealing with business models, including ecosystem services. Um, and, and there we specifically work with wetlands and what ecosystem services can be created from wetlands. Uh, like uh, water purification and, and uh, also some cultural ecosystem services and so on. Trying to, to see the value in, in these uh, services and, and also put some, some monetary value on them. Yes, did I have one more? Yes. Slide, thank you. So, um, uh, other projects that are connected to the green innovation because we of course need to to develop this area to to also get other funding and, and uh, connect to to other projects and and we have been very successful uh, during these three years to to find also other other funding and one of them is an EU finance project called biogas 2020 which also uh, partly finance uh, Niklas. And we have other projects, uh, also EU, but more intergovernmental initiative on food security, agriculture, and climate change uh, called Cinderella. And uh, business model innovation wind and lean innovation were two uh, projects financed by the, by the Knowledge Foundation. Maya is very much involved in these projects and uh, we also have um, a sustainable business model in Swedish agriculture as one uh, project connected to this. So green innovation is now I think an established uh, research area at Hamsta University and the business model innovation for sustainability uh, questions are very much uh, interested and in, 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 an important part of this, uh, this uh, research area. Mm -hmm. I think that was uh, an introduction to this and now Niklas will tell us more about biogas and why we are interested in the biogas questions. I just wanted to, to say something. When the second PhD uh, project uh, on ecosystem services and business model was established, we were then not aware of the flourishing business canvas, which uh, has uh, one of the question blocks is on ecosystem services. So uh, Exactly. Okay, now to Niklas a little bit on uh, biogas in Sweden and the challenges it faces today. Yes, thank you. So uh, before uh, Nicholas we get started, uh, I just wanted to uh, offer, because uh, we haven't actually had a chance to do this when I get to visit you guys, uh, this will be possible. One of our uh, case studies uh, that uh, Stephen and uh, Davies, who's uh, on the uh, meeting as well, and I developed together, uh, features a cheese company uh, who built a wetland in order to process the biological waste from the cheese production process. They, are, uh, they were a certified bee corporation here in Ontario, um, and that's a case study that we use in a lot of our uh, programming. Uh, so that's something that um, I could share those materials with you guys if that would be of interest. But obviously, uh, ecosystem services is a big part of that business model. Definitely, it will be interesting. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, biogas production, um, well, biogas is mainly a renewable energy source uh, consisting of um, yeah, mainly methane, which is the energy carrier that you want to, to, to use further. And uh, it, it's produced in a closed chamber uh, by bacteria in, without oxygen. 
and uh, it's mainly uh, waste material ranging from manure to industrial wastes and yeah household waste and so on um, so mainly what you use biogas for is, is either electricity heat or as vehicle fuel um, so depending on, on on the situations you can go these three separate paths uh, and, and depending on whether or not you need it for your own needs for instance farmers can use a lot of electricity or heating for stables or for, for houses etc uh, so they can use it to be self-sufficient uh, or they can also sell it um, to the market uh, if, if their need is, is, is uh, if they produce more than they need uh, uh, and except for the gas itself it also provides a valuable um, byproduct a digestate which is a very um, nutrient rich fertilizer which can be put back to to the farm field uh, after after the production of biogas to to, to enhance the the um, growth of crops uh, and so on for the next cycle of the biogas production so to speak um, okay I think you can change uh, and this picture shows uh, a simple um, biogas cycle uh, really uh, and if you see this you see the farmland on the right side uh, which is where the yeah food or and fodder for animals etc is produced and that's and that's later consumed uh, by us people that's supposed to be indicated by the houses and uh, of course production and consumption generate wastes products and uh, this waste products like i said can be then used uh, to produce this biogas as you can see in the middle of the picture this biogas plant uh, and then as you can see in the picture below uh, biogas can be used for either electricity production or as fuel for buses etc uh, and then you have the digestate going back to the fields uh, to start sort of all over again. Um, it's a closed cycle, uh, and it's a good way for farmers to to find an, an additional way of income or and be more resource efficient uh, with their resources. Um, yeah. Okay. Next. So. Uh, currently, there are some challenges uh, for biogas producers in Sweden, which is. Um, partly why we want to look into to this with business models and try to to come up with new ways of doing business to, to kind of uh, cope with difficulties. Uh, but there is really great potential and, and suitable conditions in Sweden um, at, at farm level uh, to produce biogas. And, uh, but still uh, today there are very few farm-based biogas plants that actually are profitable. And uh, as you can see here, only three three percent of the total amount of bias in Sweden comes from these farm based bias plants and, and actually there, there are quite many uh, challenges but I will only mention a couple of them uh, mainly it's difficult to make profit from the bias if you do not sell it as vehicle fuel I mean electricity and, and heat uh, is, is, is very uh, non-profitable really so you have to actually go with a vehicle fuel uh, way uh, and to do that you actually need a lot of extra investments such as purification of the gas because you have to um, clean it so to speak from the carbon dioxide so that you pretty much only have met methane left 97% uh, approximately uh, and to do that you need an investment in this purification uh, facility which is a very costly investment so it's, it's hard for, for a single farmer to do it himself. Uh, so that's why um, research has shown that you have to come together in, in networks or cooperatives or other kind of um, collaborations uh, to, to actually yeah, enhance the capacity to invest and reduce risks and so on. Um, and uh, okay, uh, just lost. Okay, good. <laughs> and uh, um, so, except for that, uh, uh, rather because of that, uh, the possibility to sell the gas are, are sometimes limited because you don't actually have the possibility to, to upgrade the gas to, to vehicle fuel. And also, the price, of course, is a problem. Uh, it's, it's fluctuating and depends on the oil, pr oil price. And uh, and as I said, the electricity. Uh, price in Sweden is very low at the moment. Uh, 
and of course you are dependent on uh, large energy distributors to 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 distribute your gas, uh, and they are sometimes hard to for farmers to to, to negotiate with them and strike deals with them because they, sometimes perhaps they're too small or um, not perhaps as profitable as, as the big big uh, companies want want to 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 um, join into. So. So that's that's mainly the biggest problems at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We can have one more. Yeah. So why farm-based biogas production? Yeah. Well, it's as you can see, <clears throat> strictly connected to sustainability. It produces a lot of uh, benefits and added values, um, both for the farmer themselves, but also for yeah the society as a whole. Uh, and uh, so, so uh, for instance. Uh, when the farmer chooses to to um, uh, to co construct the bike plant, they can streamline their business by using yeah, leftovers, crop leftovers, manure, etc., to actually produce an additional product or additional products actually. Um, and they also have the waste management problem pretty much solved, right? Because they can actually put all the waste into the bike plant. So that creates new business opportunities, and uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, this nutrient-rich energy state which you get can be also be sold if you produce more than you need, and you can reduce the mineral fertilizer use. And yeah, and simply put out the renewable energy on the market and reduce the environmental impact. Okay. okay. Are ready? <coughs> Any questions so far? Um, so, um, our uh, coming up to the education for flourishing and our first, uh, I'll try, shy example, one could say. Um, as I mentioned, we have been organizing uh, experiential workshops uh, for using the uh, business model canvas um, and both our um, results then, as well as previous research, shows that um, um, stakeholders uh, that are, that the company usually don't meet, external stakeholders that normally a company won't meet, for example, students, might offer quite um, unique and valuable ideas if involved uh, in um, idea generation. Um, both when it comes to the innovation process uh, in general product or service innovation, but also um, we see that when it comes to business model innovation from our experience. So um, having the research, the doctoral research project uh, that uh, Niklas um, runs and the case of the uh, uh, farm-based uh, biogas production, um, we decided uh, to involve uh, students um, in, in, in this work, in this action work, and actually uh, let them um, work uh, on, on um, the challenges that one of the um, farm-based networks that we work with um, is facing, um, and see what will happen, basically. Um, and we, we, we thought of that um, it's quite a new approach, having uh, students involved in a um, business model innovation process as it happens early on uh, in the innovation, uh, in the early phases of the business model innovation. Um, and um, when um, writing the results and together with Anthony, he said, hey, we need, we need to be bold. Uh, what about if you name this approach education for flourishing? Um, and the first round of reviews was quite positive to, to, to the results, to the approach. So, so um, here we are presenting this approach. And the base, um, most, basic on. Mo, let me say that most of the folks on the call today will not be surprised to hear you say that I said we should be bold. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm smiling at that, that, that comment. Um, and um, I, I, I think your characterization is, is very fair. We're um, very much suggesting, as we have with this group, in saying we should be interested in strongly sustainable outcomes as opposed to weakly sustainable ones that um, you know, we, we feel that we need to move beyond education to sustainable development or education to sustainability to education to flourishing. And that's mm -hmm. the overall uh, bold idea. Yes. Uh, and basically incorporating the bold idea in our work is mostly your credit uh, here, but uh, ah, anyway. Uh, so our workshop builds on two main ingredients. Uh, the first is how we uh, view uh, business model innovation process, and then the, the uh, pedagogical thinking behind it. Um, and um, we consider, or we uh, see the business model innovation as a socio-cognitive process, which is not a one-time event. Okay, we can we come up with an idea, we implement the idea, and that's it. Um, we see it as a rather uh, complex iterate, uh, requires uh, a lot of co-creation, um, and in the heart it lies active and social experimentation and learning. Um, and why we emphasize this is that uh, when one reads the mainstream business model innovation literature early on, at the beginning, um, a lot of focus have been put on the outcome. Okay, the innovative business models that are successful, that have disrupted whole industries, uh, but um, less focus have been put on the process. Okay, how we actually came up to develop and successfully implement uh, these business models. Um, and um, basically, um, the whole time company during the business model innovation process, uh, companies are creating and experimenting with artifacts um, or the visual representations of the possible business, the alternative business models that are analyzed, evaluated, tested. So, so uh, no matter if we use the business model canvas or the flourishing business model, we are kind of formulating hypotheses that we, with small experiments, test and uh, uh, yeah, refine or eliminate or uh, confirm. Um, and um, much of our thinking and work is inspired uh, by uh, the work of the Mill and Lecoq um, that are uh, um, looking into the um, how business model innovation um, um, unfolds uh, in a, in a, in a company. So so they are full, they are not studying the the process. Um, making a historical review, but they are following the company as they innovate. Um, and uh, what they find is that there are a number of artifacts that the companies are creating, small artifacts that is not necessarily a whole canvas that is implemented, but it might be different routines, so different artifacts that are related uh, to different components or question blocks in, in the flourishing business canvas, for example. Um, which then, uh, through which the companies learn, and then they take the other iterative step and slowly move with incremental steps towards the change of the business, the innovation of the business model. Um, and uh, what is important is that the artifact of a business model is based on a common language that makes it easier for people to uh, to discuss and, and meet each other mean the same thing. Um, and ultimately, the, the decision makers are creating these artifacts by studying the um, environment and trying to make sense of their own understanding and as well as others' experience and then take decisions accordingly. Uh, so our thinking with designing the workshop was that we should 
start providing students with opportunities to actually experiment, create artifacts, um, and, and um, analyze them, try to make sense uh, of uh, their own and others' experience, which I might say that in a mainstream uh, management uh, business, business administration problem, programs is not so common uh, in all subjects. Um, and then the start um, uh, of a business model innovation process starts with the business modeling. Um, and here we are uh, taking on a versatile, the three phases of cognitive action. Uh, the first is the thinking, which refers to the understanding of the business itself, its components. Um, then it's articulating. Uh, which basically refers to the designing a simplified business model that tries to, in a simplified uh, form, capture this understanding of a business. Um, and then the sim simplified artifact then might be shared, modified, uh, and uh, uh, used to learn. And then the last uh, stage of cognitive action refers to doing and making basically making the decisions and creating the routes needed to implement the uh, business model. Uh, so we try also to incorporate these three cognitive uh, actions in the uh, workshop. Of course, uh, doing uh, is uh, quite limited in a sense that students can't go so long to see what routines are needed to be uh, that the, the, the new business model can be implemented. Uh, but of course, they, they are uh, doing in a sense that uh, they are creating artifacts and then giving concrete ideas to the uh, decision maker how they can continue. Then when it comes to the pedagogical uh, side, uh, we are um, um, using the experimentation learning theory of, and COLB learning cycle. Um, and despite it being criticized, it, it's uh, still quite influential when it comes to management education. Um, and um, basically, it, uh, um, it, uh, impl it says that we uh, learn as we uh, go through the different stages in the cycle. We can enter well, at any point, but what is important that uh, uh, we basically transform experience um, all the time. Uh, so we learn from experience. We can have concrete experience. We can feel um, how things are done we can observe and uh, reflect, uh, seeing how others, for example, are doing something, which might then lead us to, OK, um, what we learn, then what we experience and observe changes our current understanding. And then we apply this new understanding in active, uh, uh, active doing and experience. Um, so in our case, um, the workshop is based mostly on uh, active experience and doing and concrete experience. So the students uh, do and feel. Uh, they are basically taking on the role of both uh, problem owner and problem saver. They are going into the shoes of the, of the uh, company. Yes? Um, and um, the workshop's pedagogical content, uh, how we have defined it. Uh, yes? Maya? Yes? Um, yeah? Could you just go back one slide? Um, you may be uh, pleased to hear uh, that uh, Patricia Kavlik, who drew this, drew this diagram, is Professor Peter Jones' partner, who is on this call. OK. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a very small world. Peter, do you, do you know the context in which this was drawn originally? You're on, Peter, you there? Wait, sorry. Anyway, okay. Maybe I'll move. Oh, here he is. 
Do you know the context in which uh, Patricia did this drawing originally? No, we can't hear you, Peter. Okay, keep going, Maya. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make a connection. Okay. Mm -hmm. um... Um, and what I, what I must clarify is this um, this workshop um, is uh, part uh, of a bachelor level course uh, on uh, developing developing new products and services, uh, which is basic uh, a level course on, on product and service development, um, which is given for um, exchange students uh, so we had this year uh, 41 students from 14 different countries and uh, they have quite different backgrounds uh, they can be um, their background can be in engineering um, and um, also business administration uh, or uh, in in dental care so so this course is pretty open and gives a basic level of the understanding of how a new product uh, development and service looks like uh, and it builds mostly on, on uh, the stage gate process by Cooper. Um, so we, uh, in, in this context, uh, one of the last things that the students do in the course is, is uh, this workshop that I'm talking about uh, right now. Um, so the pedagogical con content is like to give them, a co of course, a broader uh, understanding of the process of innovation um, and um, business modeling at the early phases um, and to actually make them realize um, the value of experimenting, prototyping uh, in, in um, which a focus is on collaboration and feedback, uh, both in the groups, between the groups, and with an uh, external stakeholder, uh, external stakeholders. Um, um, and uh, we also want to um, um, expose the students to a real situation, which is happening at the moment, not of course, when we work with cases and case studies, it's again, it's also a real situation, but it's another feeling to, to uh, feel that you work on a problem that the decision makers are uh, working also with at the moment. Um, and to make them realize that uh, the information is incomplete, incomplete uh, there is high complexity and uh, time constraints, conflicting goals, and uncertainty. Um, and the idea, simply said, is to give them a hands-on experience and uh, rather than they simply learn about the practice, okay, there is different canvases, different tools to innovate your business models, and they have different number of building blocks. Um, with different content, they should assume the role of the practitioner uh, instead of simply learn about the practice. This is the idea. Um, and um, the workshop was designed in line of the business model innovation thinking as a socio-cognitive process, the experiential learning theory, and also inspired by the service learning approach, the, where you serve the community, uh, where the community uh, organizations and the university institution are collaborating in order to uh, that the students are uh, working on real challenges uh, for the community. Um, basically wanted to empower and equip them with different uh, tools and as well as an understanding. Uh, it is, was designed as a group activity process. The students worked in, in eight groups of five students each. Um, in which they were uh, performing different tasks to create artifacts they presented and received and handled feedback from the external stakeholder. 
Um, so they were uh, basically uh, using applying the flourishing business canvas to to um, uh, to do business modeling for uh, for a biogas uh, company, home scale biogas production cooperative that we have named Alpha Biogas. Uh, Niklas, do you want to say something about the the Alpha Biogas itself? A case company. Okay. Uh, well, um, it's uh, it's it's a cooperative, uh, farm cooperative, uh, which is um, consisting of 36 uh, members, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And um, initially, uh, all these 36 members were interested uh, to perhaps not build their own biogas plant, but in, to some extent build plants together. Uh, at joint, joint places, uh, but uh, as the difficulties arose, as I mentioned before, and then many of them kind of lost the yeah the willingness to actually invest in biogas, but some of them still did. So at the moment there are three plants um, in process, uh, but they are only producing electricity and heat for for themselves, which uh, as I said before also is not a profitable way for them. Uh, so they actually want to to build this um, uh, yeah, purification plant where they can upgrade the biogas and to put it out to the, to the, to the transport market as a vehicle fuel um, and, and find customers for that of course. So that has been the main challenges in, in the workshops uh, pretty much to actually find ways to, to reach customers and how to distribute uh, the biogas to these customers. Uh, they are basically stuck because most of their members, as Nicola said, uh, they at the beginning they were 36. Um, I think they they started up the cooperative in 2009, and there was a big enthusiasm going on, uh, which slowly died. And now basically the most active members are the board members, um, which uh, want to find a way to park again the, the enthusiasm and interest there and of course like find a way to be uh, profitable um, as well um, and I think both Niklas and Marie have been following them most almost from the beginning of their establishment mm -hmm. um, um, and um, in the in this work basically we want to to increase students awareness reflection and learning uh, related to flourishing uh, and business modeling um, this, and we put um, three learning objectives uh, for particularly for the workshop uh, to increase students awareness and reflection on how sustainability uh, trends can be addressed via business model innovation to give students practice in applying the business, uh, a business model innovation tool, the flourishing business canvas, in order to produce a suggestion for a new business model for a real company based on the challenges basis, and to give students oral presentation practice as they describe their business model solution for flourishing and to receive evaluative feedback. Um, and um, we uh, use we uh, evaluated uh, if um, the learning objectives are uh, achieved uh, by using uh, the first two levels of the uh, Kirkpatrick's approach to evaluate training. Uh, the first level is the comprising reaction, basically to map the student's interest, motivation, and attention to the to the students. Then. The second level is learning, uh, determine which terms, knowledge, or skills the students acquire through the activities. Um, the second are quite relevant, um, maybe uh, also for the future, um, for example, Anthony, this program that you are running now, um, you can use uh, this all four levels, because the, the last two levels basically assess the influence of the education of this program uh, and the new knowledge applied in an organizational situation. 
um, and then results, how the training basically has influenced the organization as a whole. Um, so I think this uh, approach might be quite useful for you when evaluating your program. Um, and then we also use um, um, the more green and uh, Gallis categories of learning. Um, declarative knowledge, basically the facts that the individual knows, procedural knowledge, um, that the individual is aware how something is done, and then competence, the individual shows how something is done. Right, that was a question from uh, Simon in the chat. Uh, yes. Asked, how long was the workshop? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I should have said that. The workshop was four hours. The workshop was four hours. Uh, the students had one week uh, as a preparation to do uh, this research. Um, I'll come with with all these details a little bit later on. Is it okay with my answer so far? I, I will come into quite many details when it comes to how the workshop was organized and planned a little bit later on. Okay, I don't see, I don't hear anything, so I continue. So uh, what we done basically to uh, to gather uh, data for the evaluation was to run two um, online questionnaires uh, before the workshop and after the workshop. The students wrote an online blog after the workshop. We evaluated the, the canvases, the artifacts that they created and presented, and there was a discussion with uh, Bill Gasol for representative. Um, and um, as I said, this was uh, this workshop was part of a course that is uh, in total eight uh, weeks in length, and um, the students uh, did the workshop in in, in uh, the last week, um, and. Um, they uh, basically already from two weeks, not one week in advance, two weeks, they have the case description and the main challenges. Uh, so they had to perform secondary uh, data disk research, um, uh, get acquainted with uh, the flourishing business canvas because we didn't provide any formal instruction uh, to the flourishing business canvas. They have been provided with links and materials that uh, Anthony has uh, created. Um, and uh, in week eight, we run the four, um, the four hours workshop uh, where um, um, we started with, uh, uh, again, presentation of the main challenge from a company representative uh, and the opportunity for questions and answer session. And then the students uh, had um, two and a half hours to uh, to create artifacts, to experiment. Uh, and during these two and a half hours, um, it was uh, the company representative uh, and uh, basically all of us, uh, me, uh, Niklas, Marie, and Fauci were uh, there, um, going in between the groups, discussing the ideas, giving them feedback, um, and then then have time to present the final, the finalized uh, canvases. Um, I, I think uh, I, I would uh, just like to add um, or stress, I should say, um, the the importance of having the representative from the biogas cooperative there for the students to interact with. So the students had the opportunity to um, interact with, it, with the expert from this business that they were exploring, um, which I think really brought the experience alive for the students and provided an authoritative source of information from which they could experiment. And also, if I understand well, um, the uh, person from the company, if they saw something on the canvas which wasn't correct factually, were able to correct uh, the students, so that their experimentation would be more grounded mm. in the current realities of the uh, cooperative. Do I have that about right, Maya? Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, and uh, as we will see later on uh, when we see the uh, how students have commented uh, on, on the workshop, uh, the company representative being there uh, is one of the key ingredients uh, to, to, to the workshop. Um, yes. So it's a lot of text. I know a lot of small text, but this gives a, a, a detailed account of the phases and activities. And we have divided them to um, before the workshop, during, and after. And uh, before the workshop, the focus was uh, mostly to discuss. Uh, we, as uh, researchers and lecturers, to discuss with the company uh, representative uh, and try to formulate uh, the key challenge together, um, kind of translated in, a, in, a, uh, in several uh, challenge questions that will kind of trigger the, the students uh, and guide them in their work. Um, and uh, then all um, the case description and the instructions was uh, created collaboratively. Now, of course, we, we had uh, as uh, academics the leading role, but there was uh, interactive, uh, interactive work there. Um, so during the, the, uh, the workshop, uh, briefed you on that. Um, and uh, um, what is so interesting is uh, what is happening after the workshop. Um, we sat with the company representative and um, analyzed um, all ideas, all eight um, campuses that the students uh, came up. And um, um, the company uh, representatives for uh, representative was also indicating which one seems to be the, the most novel uh, and the most feasible. Um, and uh, then uh, we have been also discussing an action plan. Uh, okay, how the company uh, should proceed uh, with these ideas afterwards? Um, what are the next steps uh, in order to move further? Uh, which is where Nicholas's PhD pro research project comes into the picture, uh, because we have run uh, with uh, with uh, uh, one workshop with the co members of the cooperative after the um, after the workshop with students, uh, starting off by presenting the results um, from the student workshop. Um, and then briefly introducing the flourishing business canvas and then uh, let them uh, also uh, um, experiment and create artifacts, discuss uh, ideas. Um, yes. Then the results, it's a bit also too much text, but uh, we have tried to connect uh, to have illustrative student comments for each of the learning objectives. And um, I have bold, uh, highlighted with bold uh, the ones that um, are quite uh, strong when it comes to the first learning objective to increase the student's awareness and reflection on sustainability trends, trends and business model innovation. My student writes, I think the flourishing business canvas pushes us to go further in sustainability subject. It makes us think deep about questions that we never have to think about before. We have to find the solution. I learned what the flourishing business canvas is about, how to apply it, and what kind of information we need as we brainstorm. And you see that this last sentence is already going into the learning objective too. Um, and um, a few quotes there um, that I think are quite illustrative. Uh, it was something completely new for me. It was amazing how in just one morning we could learn the first steps and how to apply them. Plus, the workshop was very meaningful because we can deep and explore the specific model in a subject where we need so many answers nowadays. Um, I learned that we are uh, that when we apply the flourishing business canvas to a real case, the most important part is value. 
we need to think and focus on value part, which can create more social and financial profit for the company. Um, there was something that I wanted to emphasize on, but uh, something that is quite was quite interesting is that in this uh, course, the students uh, had uh, um, have never heard about biogas. They were not aware; like they have heard just like very little, so they were not familiar uh, with the technology and what biogas uh, as a renewable source of energy is about. Uh, so uh, in all of the uh, responses that we got, it was like, yeah, we know now what biogas is, and I mean, uh, and we know what flourishing business canvas is, and we suddenly have uh, 40 ambassadors uh, that will go home in 14 different countries, and and um, in, in in a sense we have planted the seed of change because we have spread the awareness to uh, with 40 students. Um, and when it comes to the last uh, learning objective. Um, what is really interesting is that such kind of workshops, um, no matter the tool that we use, we have found both when we use the, um, the uh, Austin Aldress uh, Canvas and the Flourishing Business Canvas that it increases self-confidence. Um, and here this comes again. The workshop gave me uh, more self-confidence in working with real company. It gave me knowledge about biogas and insights into uh, the problems. Um, yeah, it improved my presentation skills, really beneficial and self-confidence building. I really like to present the results to the representatives. It felt like we were really involved in the co uh, cooperation and our, that our ideas were welcomed. Um, so students were really positive that the company representative is there and that he's interested to listen to their ideas. Um, and uh, things that they are valuable. Um, so, um, um, out of 40 students, um, only one uh, was negative uh, and skeptical. All, all students were positive, and they bring aspects such group interactivity, collaboration, the real case, and the interaction with the, with the representative. Uh, the emphasis on the business model innovation for flourishing in the biogas industry, this problem-solving opportunity, uh, some even pointed creativity and divergent thinking that was required, um, and they also realized that uh, students are as as a resource, valuable resource for the industry, because they felt that their ideas are um, uh, contribute um, to help uh, the, the particular company. And they also point out that it was fun, interesting, and what is more important, meaningful. Um, they learned about the main question, the model itself and its function, how to apply it. Um, and also the role of design thinking, and especially when it comes to creating artifacts. Um, and they, as I pointed before, students think that the workshop boosted creativity and self-confidence. Um, I have a few more uh, quotes here, uh, but uh, I want to bring, I think, three. So it's the second one, the second bullet point, workshop that links schools uh, or universities to companies in common work, a proof of the quality and effectiveness of the study program and also of the students' experience. The work is always helpful and I think having courses related to real economic actors is a key. Um, then it's one, two, three, four, five, the five bullet point. People are working for a better planet that are making the actual business system work is already satisfying. The opportunity to learn how to do the same is good, not only for me, but for every new generation business person. Um, and then the uh, next, 
not the last one, but the one before that. Knowing that people are working for a better planet and still making that, no, but this is the same. Okay, so these two I wanted to, to um, bring up and the last student on here on the quote again points out that it was a meaningful experience. Um, so this part that I presented with the student quotes was mostly reflecting about student learning and the learning process in related to the learning objectives. What we have also looked into was the actual outcomes. So we uh, had eight groups of five people and we came up in total with 347 ideas and basically we have counted each idea in each question block of the flourishing business canvas which we then analyzed and, and uh, reduced to 200 ideas that are specific relevant and novel um, and uh, when clustering uh, the ideas we saw that the primary focus uh, was on three uh, question blocks, uh, the benefits, um, the goals, and the stakeholders. Um, um, and um, uh, this might be a reflection, this focus might be a reflection of the fact that um, students um, realize that of, of the goal that the business is setting up um, for its existence is of primary importance and how um, we are uh, relating to stakeholders um, is um, of importance. But of course, the benefits, uh, apart from uh, generating profit, um, uh, how the company can create environmental and social benefits. This was the main focus. Maybe also it's, um, it's reflects the difference from the, the um, Osterwalder's canvas um, uh, because some of the students were familiar with Osterwalder's canvas so, so they put efforts in business uh, in, in the question blocks that are uh, different. Um, and the three main ideas that the company representative thought um, were most interesting um, um, from their point of view um, was um, three. The first was the increased cooperation uh, with other partners and uh, entities, um, and especially uh, students um, pointed out that um, the, the cooperative can learn from uh, from other farm-based um, cooperatives that are already successful how they have done it. Um, um, and um, exchange uh, um, experience on that. Uh, then this, the Alpha Biogas Network, it's invisible basically. You can't find anything for, 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 for this cooperative, almost anything. Uh, so students uh, pointed out that uh, they need to increase their visibility in order to uh, to attract uh, stakeholders to be involved for the cause in, in, order, in order to uh, um, in, in engage the um, uh, governmental actors as well and the broader community in the region. And the one that was kind of the third idea was most uh, novel and kind of um, innovative is was the idea to establish a totally green area. So the focus of the whole uh, business model is not the production of biogas only, but establishing a green area where part of the concept is biogas production. Um, and make sure that uh, you establish uh, or create a strong brand, brand around it which can also uh, be as a bait for the uh, for the uh, region and uh, uh, governmental authorities to support uh, the cooperative in their work um so um, um some um, um, implications um, 
is that, uh, and conclusion is that um, students uh, were exposed to complexity and uh, this was an opportunity to develop uh, their uh, reflective practitioner skills. Um, and um, also uh, this experience increased uh, their self-confidence as contributors to change uh, towards uh, uh, sustainable business practices. Uh, what we found that it's absolutely vital is uh, identification and involvement of uh, willing external participants. A company uh, that is uh, at the moment in early on in the process of business model innovation. Um, working on, on, on case studies is, um, is also good, but, but this gives a, a, a better uh, effect when it comes to student learning interaction and also it's a learning opportunity for uh, for the uh, company representative. In our case in this workshop the company representative didn't wasn't at all aware of the flourishing business canvas uh, and for that matter for the uh, Osterwalder's canvas so, so um, when we discussed early on we have gone through the flourishing business canvas explained uh, and uh, he actually took a big uh, poster size uh, after the workshop and uh, taped it in his uh, in his office and said I'm thinking looking at it putting post-it notes and all the time um, trying to think in these terms um, and as I said we sent uh, 40 students in 14 different countries with this experience in the in the backpacker, um, and those people are the future decision makers, basically. So, so I think this attempt was on a quite uh, small scale, uh, as I said, a shy attempt, uh, but more um, more uh, initiatives like this on a larger scale uh, might give quite big uh, impact. Uh, we want to believe um, and um, we we work currently to develop uh, this approach we have been uh, designing a course project where students are uh, using the flourishing business canvas with the same case but then they have eight weeks to work uh, on the challenges and we took, uh, took on this ideas that came from the workshop that I'm presenting now and uh, as a starting point for the work in the project. Um, but we haven't uh, analyzed any results yet uh, there. Uh, so we are developing and um, thinking how we can further develop uh, this on a larger scale. And our experience is documented uh, currently in in three uh, papers. Uh, the first one um, is uh, describing the ideation experience uh, using the uh, Ostewalder's canvas. Um, then uh, the second article um, is looking into a biogas um, network, Swedish biogas network that is quite uh, successful. One of the few successful case, cases in Sweden, right Niklas? That's very right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last one is uh, basically uh, the one that is under review now. Um, but this this presentation is giving a brief overview. Um, so um, what about the future um, and uh, how we can uh, collaborate with other members of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group. Uh, I, I leave this as an open question. Um, of course, obviously one, one, um, one obvious uh, route for collaboration is the, uh, this edu um, educational uh, activities. Um, possibly contribution with the case in the toolbox that you are working with. Any other ideas? Uh, we, are, we are basically open for discussion there. 
So, Maya, there's a question from Simon in the chat. If you wanted to end the presentation, you could then see the chat um, and, and respond to Simon. And um, I um, uh, wondered perhaps if you, uh, obviously, uh, Dr. Florian, we get Florian, was not able to join us uh, today, uh, but uh, you and he have uh, been starting to talk, and he came up to visit you uh, just before Christmas. Uh, so perhaps if there's something about that collaboration that's already started there, uh, you'd like to uh, share a little bit about that after you answer time and questions. And I see that Bob and Peter are typing, so I think you're going to get a few more questions uh, very shortly. Okay, uh, so Simon's question. Everybody sees that, right? I don't need to read it. You can all see the chat. Well, um, obviously, they didn't get any instruction in, in, in the flourishing business canvas, uh, which is, I see both as a shortcoming, but also a, 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 as an um, advantageous thing, um, because they, they came to the, uh, basically, um, they have prepared, they, they looked at uh, your uh, instructional video, so, so they were not really, they could come with the ideas out of the box, they were not really constrained in a certain type of thinking. So they kind of were quite intuitive and follow their gut feeling, rather than being instrumental. Because if they're quite aware uh, and um, if they, know well how to use the flourishing business canvas and I don't know if I explain it correctly in, in English but um, uh, we don't want them to be purely instrumental we want them to come with crazy ideas but uh, in the long run I think the students will benefit of having instruction before that having a lecture and maybe working on a few cases case studies before uh, they are having the experiential workshop. And of course, having, uh, having more time to ideate is uh, always a plus. We are currently thinking this year in the same course to have a 24-hour challenge um, where they need to work 24 hours with the challenge we present to them. We will see if, if uh, this idea will be realized, but um, yeah, more practice with the flourishing business canvas won't hurt. Um, as well as um, um, going through the uh, UN uh, goals, um, using the 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 um, this. Uh, uh, oh, how was it called again? The um, uh, Flourishing, uh, where a lot of uh, examples of flourishing enterprises are published, gathered. Um, aim, to, aim to flourish. Aim to flourish. Yeah, I, I lost the name. Aim to flourish. I, I, so I should, I should actually thank you for mentioning that, Maya. I was going to mention this to everybody. And um, so uh, the Aim to Flourish project has now been uh, going for quite some time, and they have uh, an increasingly large database of really interesting examples. Um, and if they haven't already, they are about to upgrade the search engine on that database so that you can search it by sector, um, mm -hmm. which at the moment you can't do. Uh, so at the moment, I think you can search it by country. Uh, but that's a really useful resource. And we have several members from the Aim to Flourish project who are members of the LinkedIn group. Um, and so you can connect with them directly there or obviously through the, the website. But uh, I think that's going to become an increasingly important resource. And actually, to the future, Maya, um, one thing we've been talking to them about, we haven't figured out how to fund this yet, uh, our normal perennial problem, is we were thinking that it would be really great if those case studies came with a flourishing business canvas that explained the business model of those case study companies that they believe are aiming to flourish. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, we have a, a, an intention to add to the aim to flourish toolkit, um, the flourishing business canvas to, to the professor's toolkit. Uh, but again, we've not yet figured out how to fund that work. So uh, uh, if anybody has any ideas on how to do that, uh, and if anybody would like to lead that project, uh, then that would be a, a lovely thing. 
Uh, actually, I I I uh, I have also become a member of Aim to Flourish uh, after you have uh, brought this up in our article writing. Um, yes. And uh, for this course, um, the first assignment that the students need to do is to become uh, in the role of a consultant for a company uh, that they identify of the Aim to Flourish. So so they will start to be introduced to the concept of flourishing and examples, cases of companies, uh, flourishing enterprises quite early before we have the workshop. Um, so we are improving slowly. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, let me see, there is a lot of questions that pop out. Uh, Um, we have actually not uh, the, the question from Bob. Um, we have actually not used the scorecard matrix uh, at all in the evaluation. How ideas so practical? Basically, the evaluation was done by, by the uh, by the company representative from their point of view. But if you have any ideas how we can use the scorecard matrix. Uh, we can improve our evaluation of ideas. Yeah, I was just <laughs> referring to the comment by the student about value uh, and being able to ensure that there is financial value and I gather environmental value and social value that were being contributed to uh, yeah. or added to mm -hmm. uh, through the business model and how you would know that. Mm, okay. Uh, well, I must say when the ideas, um, of course, we had posted notes in, in all uh, question blogs, uh, but um, actually the ideas more were not a complete canvas, not a complete business model, but rather fragments uh, of a potential business model. Um, and um, um, having so limited time, uh, usually students tend to um, um, avoid or be quite general when it comes to financial ma matrix, and so so this is one of the uh, of the drawbacks of having such a uh, short uh, workshop. So. Um, but it still seems very valuable. To, it still seems very valuable to the company itself. Uh, mm -hmm. They they seem to value the ideas and the, um, the innovative approaches to broadening the context of what they were into. Uh, so despite that, uh, they found this was really helpful. Yeah, they they did, uh, and. Um, in our previous uh, work, when we used only Osterwalder's um, uh, business canvas, they came a uh, really good idea that the company actually take on and continue to develop, and they actually hired the student that came up with this idea uh, in the company. Uh, so um, despite not being an expert in, 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 in the industry, in the area, uh, students do come with quite valuable ideas. This is our experience. Even though not so, like, uh, we can't say that we have offered this time a complete business model prototype, rather a fragment uh, of a potential business model. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, I, I know, that unfortunately, we are very close to the end of our time. But maybe oh, we, yeah. I, I think there's one other question uh, that Peter Jones uh, ask, which uh, perhaps we can respond to, and then I shall draw things to a close if I... If, um, if you uh, help me... Very late for our colleagues in Sweden. I believe it's almost midnight there now, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's I can't find this question. It's uh, quite much in the chat. Uh, if you can read it for me. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, Peter said, impressive level of work from students new to this toolkit. What did they have the most trouble with what further tutorial workshop work? Uh, what what further tutorial or workshop work would work well as a next stage after this workshop?
for the students themselves. Yeah, did you hear that? No, oh, can you hear me okay? Now we can yeah, hear I, I hear you. So, yeah, the, the first first question was um, in the workshop, I mean, what, um, what components of the uh, Canvas or the toolkit did students um, uh, uh, perhaps have the most cognitive difficulty with what was their did they have you know did they encounter stumbling blocks yeah and uh, then yeah sorry for interrupting go ahead Maya why don't we uh, answer the first part of Pete's question first and then we can ask the second part okay mm -hmm. Okay, so the problem that they had the most problems with was um, uh, ecosystem services uh, and biological stocks. Uh, and and uh, this might be explained that they are business administration students and it was difficult for them to uh, understand how this could be valuable for the company in what way. Um, so this yeah, is... I, I... That makes sense. Yeah, those you know those those blocks are those are new. Um, I I mean they're they're not new ideas at a very high level, but to really think about how to integrate those into a business model and why they're meaningful to a business that you know it it we probably ought to find a way to to support that part you know the environmental aspects of the toolkit so that um, you know new students in particular, but also, you know, users that are very new to environmental ecological concepts like that can have some examples or patterns like Anthony's uh, um, cheese um, production uh, example, I think is a, is a great one for ecosystem services. So that makes sense. Yeah. And then I just wonder, the other part of the question was, uh, you know, uh, what if you could do another tutorial with the students or if you know what did they seem to want to do next what was their you know what was their next um, learning stage do you think um, at following the workshop that they you might have done um, maybe a longer debrief um, analyzing um, their work a little bit more in details because I mean in the classroom uh, in a discussion because now basically they they wrote uh, online blog um, and uh, some students devote more time to it some students are not so um, interested to to um, write much and the placement of the workshop is a little bit unfortunate at the end of the course because then the students become quite focused on the exam um, so I think it should be um, ideally this, the workshop should be in the middle and we should have a debrief session and um, maybe even before the workshop we should start with talking about value and what is value and who understands value in what way. Um, I, I think it's also worth noting that this is an undergraduate class. It, it's an undergraduate class, yeah. Um, so in the th no, third year or fourth year of the program? Uh, well, uh, since it's with exchange students, they are quite mixed. It's quite mixed, okay. Yeah, uh, but mostly the second year, I think most of them are. I, I mean, I, I, have, I have to say that um, our, our experience from the work we've been doing with the Canvas, um, I, I've, I've been constantly really pleasantly surprised, as I think uh, you have been there in Sweden, about how much sense-making people are able to do with how little um, training on the ideas. And that's not to say that they're necessarily doing a really good job of coming up with really good business models. But in terms of just being able to get stuck in and, and make some use of it um, and get some value out of it, uh, the, the barrier, the amount of knowledge that you need to give them up, up front is really very, very small. I, I'm, is that a fair summary from your perspective too, Maya? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I, um, think, I think the challenge is going to be how do we help people learn enough so that they can produce good business models um, and, and that's certainly one yeah. thing we're now trying in our program at the Centre for Social 
innovation now, a flourishing business model, innovation accelerator. So we have a, a group of 28 entrepreneurs for five months through, uh, so we've got uh, six full day labs, plus we have coaches who are give, being given additional training in the flourishing business canvas. So this is work I'm doing with the Harvard who wasn't able to join us today, and Harvard Weisshardt who also wasn't able to join us today. So uh, I hope by June uh, we'll be able to report back on um, what happens when you, you really give people a lot of training and a lot of support. Um, so fingers crossed it goes well. Yeah. And you also wanted me to, um, to say something about Florian's visit? Uh, yes, just very, if, if, if you don't mind, it's already after midnight for you, so if, if you would like yeah. to share, then that's great, and that yeah. will close after that. It well, it will be quite short. He was here for three days and um, uh, he gave uh, two lectures. One was more aimed towards practitioners and students, uh, more practice oriented, basically giving uh, or cherry picking uh, uh, the results from the recent uh, report for the, um, oh, how is this abbreviation? Now I'm getting tired. Um, you know his uh, research for the uh, sustainable network, how is it called? Uh, the Network for Business Sustainability South yeah. Africa. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so he gave uh, cherry picking on that uh, report and then the second one was more um, research oriented. Where do we stand now and where we want to go uh, on the latest development in the area? And he also ran um, a workshop with, with uh, 16 companies um, using their game out of the box uh, business kit. Um, so this so, is what... I, I was going to say, so Heck, Florian and Henning will be presenting uh, the latest updates on those topics to this group uh, at the meeting uh, in May, I believe, if I'm going to be interested in this double check. Uh, yes, in May, uh, there, and so they have a new book about uh, coming out called Values Based Innovation Management, uh, which uh, they're going to be talking about, and I'm sure they'll bring that up too. Yeah, and they, they have improved their, uh, um, their uh, um, workshop method to incorporate the value based uh, thinking or work uh, from their book. Um, and um, what uh, other uh, work we do with him, uh, I will be part of um, his um, expert group, uh, as well as you, uh, in their work to, uh, um, to create patterns of existing uh, business model for sustainability okay. in the literature. So Florian is, is uh, building on the work that Nancy Bowen has been doing about patterns and extending it also with, uh, I remember well, with another of our members, Alexander Boyce in Montreal, uh, is also working on, on that and uh, be interested to see how that evolves. Uh, and in fact, uh, thank you, let me close now by saying thank you to Maya, Marie and mm -hmm. Nicholas for your excellent presentation today. Uh, thank you for staying up so late. Uh, I noticed that the only person on the call uh, who is in daylight is uh, our colleague Nigel Teal, who is in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you, Nigel, for uh, showing us some daylight in this uh, in this talk. Um, I, I will just to briefly summarise the next uh, few months what we have coming up. Uh, so next month, I'm really delighted uh, that uh, Bob Willard, who's uh, on the call today, and Dr. Jeff Kendall from the Future Fit Foundation. Uh, will be giving us an update uh, on uh, the future fit business benchmark and the uh, work to develop a business case tool uh, based on that the alt book uh, that has now been released by Bob um, and I, I know for those of you who are new to the group that of course uh, members of this group have been involved since the very start of this project in fact Bob was the initiator of it and I and others have been involved and we've had regular updates on how the project has unfolded over the last uh, four years or so, and so this will be the, the latest in, uh, in that uh, uh, discussion. Uh, then in April, um, sorry, in March, we're, uh, we're currently open. Uh, I'm hoping uh, that we, Bob is going to be able to pull a rabbit out of the hat and get Bowens uh, to come and 
present on their new report on uh, business uh, models. Uh, there's a link posted to the uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, pages about that new report that Roland has just come out with. So hopefully we'll get Roland. If not, we'll, I'm looking for a speaker <laughs> otherwise. Uh, then in April, uh, we have Nancy Robin, uh, who, as you know, has presented to us uh, at least once before uh, on her work on uh, sustainable business model patterns. And she also has a new book uh, coming uh, that has already come out uh, and uh, on circular business. So she'll be presenting to us in April. And then in May, as I mentioned, Florian uh, Lunek Freud and uh, Henning uh, Brewer uh, will be presenting to us on their book. And then after that, uh, the, the uh, world is your oyster. So please let me know what you'd like to hear about. Uh, and if you'd like to present, uh, then we would be delighted to have you. Maybe by that point, there'll be something for me to report on our work uh, at um, with entrepreneurs. And Simon, perhaps, did your uh, work uh, in Brazil on, um, uh, I you know, lose the name of your program off the top of my head. Uh, maybe there'll be something for you to report to us on the practical experience there as well. So with that, thank you all for joining us. It's been a fantastic uh, session today. Uh, the recording will be posted to the LinkedIn group very shortly. The slides are already up and linked. Uh, and I look forward to um, hearing from all of you and seeing all of you uh, at next month's meeting, which is February the 14th, um, which could present a few challenges to people, but nevertheless, hopefully, uh, we'll have a good audience for that as well. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you so much.